Two of my favorite battle-tested blades. Um, one of them is uh, this um, kukri that I bought in Nepal. Um, this particular style. I mentioned in one of my earlier videos. You can see it's a little longer uh, and narrower, not quite as curved, but just really balanced. This style is called a sirupati, and um, it's one of my favorite variations of kukris. And um, so I want to show that. And then uh, my nephew. Um, is a sergeant in the Marine Corps and uh, I want to show my second uh, favorite uh, battle tested blade is, of course is one that I made for him in, uh, when he was deployed to uh, Afghanistan and he, he carried it for uh, almost three years over there so uh, anyway uh, check this out and uh, hope you enjoy so let's look at this kukri uh, I'm not going to do any cutting with it, but I just want to show you it today, and I'll do a video with cutting and doing some bushcraft stuff uh, a little later. But as you can see, it's really a nice uh, long blade. In fact, it's um, exactly 14 inches long. So then, like a lot of kukris, it comes with a secondary knife. This is a small knife for... Uh, doing small knife tasks. You can see it's convex ground. It's also hammer forged and um, came with the skookery. And then another thing that you don't see a lot on newer kukris, but all the real old ones had it, is this. It's called a chakmak. And um, this is a combination steel for stealing the blade and a flint striker. And then on the back of the knife, it's got this pouch and inside it's got a little water buffalo leather kind of wallet or pouch type thing and fits really tightly in here and um, very water resistant and um, this was with the kukri uh, when I got it and it's got kind of like a wallet these little flaps and then it opens up like that and what was so cool about this one is they open it up and uh, there was a piece of quartz inside and it smelled like wood smoke and this is what the chuckmuck looks like striking it so you can see that thing uh, throws sparks pretty good so that's kind of a cool keepsake to have that with the knife you can put tinder or any other kind of possibles inside that little pouch and then you would steal the knife uh, not necessarily like this but you know I'm just kind of showing you what that would look like uh, if I did that. So that's what that was for. And um, I got this knife when I was in Nepal. Uh, a friend of mine who was an officer in the Gurkhas uh, in the British Army for years, he was stationed in Hong Kong and was in a bunch of different places, Falklands, and um, just an amazing guy with cool stories. Um, he helped me pick this out, and this was a real old one, not bought in some touristy place, but uh, bought off a guy who had it. And uh, was really old. So it all goes together like this in kind of a really cool um, sheath that's wood inside covered with uh, water buffalo leather. When you're hiking up in the mountains, this is usually how you see them being carried, just stuck through a belt. Kind of a cool one that I forged out of an old farrier's rasp. You can still see the teeth pattern in the blade there with the Osage orange handle. It's really um, just a cool old kukri. I use it all the time when I'm out in the woods. Um, when I'm bow hunting a lot of times, especially when I'm scouting and setting up stands, um, I take this along and it just lops branches that are in my shooting lanes. Um, 
and uh, a lot of times when I take this, I don't even take a saw. It's just it's just so vicious because it's got that you know hand high blade low sort of profile. So when it when it chops, it's just you know amazing and um, pretty thick too. You can see and um, hand forged, and then it's it's uh, got that line just following kind of along. Not not too much of a distal taper at all. Tapers a little bit at the top. And then again, just real heavy in this sweet spot right here. And um, it's got some, uh, the blacksmith who forged this, um, you know, made some decorative markings here and did a little carving on the handle. Uh, Nepali hands are small. Um, my hands aren't real big. They're kind of medium sized and kind of square. But if this handle was any smaller, I'd have to rehandle it. But it, it actually feels pretty good. And um, it's got a uh, handmade brass ferrule. Uh, here and then you can see you know a little bit of carving on the handle and stuff. I drilled a hole through this tang because it's pretty soft and then uh, put a brass pin in there and epoxied it in just because a lot of times on these older kukris um, you know I don't know if it's, I swing them different than Nepalis do or whatever but I end up yanking the handles off a lot of times and um, so that's that I want to uh, do a video doing some bushcraft stuff with it because I honestly think um, this is such a cool tool for, for bushcrafting, especially because you've got the bigger kukri and then you can have a smaller knife. And so um, you saw the one I forged. I'm going to forge a companion knife to go with that. And that'll be a little bigger, more traditional looking bushcraft knife. And then I'm also going to make a chakmuk. I'll, I'll make a fire, you know, a, a flint striker. Um, that, that also has some of the ideas of that Nepali chakmuk that could be used to steal um, the blade, hone the blade of the uh, bigger knife and the smaller knife. And then also, uh, I'll make a pouch like that in the sheath and uh, be able to put some you know tinder and some other stuff in there. So that, that's going to be a fun project. I'll show that to you. But I want to go out in the deer woods where I hunt and uh, do some fishing and stuff. It's really beautiful. It's about five minutes from my house. I've shot a lot of deer back in there, and I want to do a video. I'll take the kukri along and do some bushcraft stuff, and and I'm going to shoot um, uh, one of my deer guns and and just show you guys um, kind of where I hunt and a couple things like that. So that'll be a lot of fun. Watch for that video to come. It's just been a super busy time for me at work and stuff. So with that and the build along, it's just tough to get that kind of stuff done. Hey, to close up, uh, I'll show you a little bit of some pictures of my uh, nephew. I'm really proud of him. And uh, like I said, he's a sergeant in the Marine Corps. And the um, guy is amazing. He was a combat um, photographer. And so right in the thick of things, shooting a gun and shooting a camera. I mean, it, brave people go to war with a gun. Crazy people go to war with a camera. But uh, he was right in the thick of stuff, um, taking and giving fire back on the enemy and uh, some really amazing things. But uh, he carried this knife I made for him all throughout his time there. And, and um, it's pretty neat. Um, so I don't have too many pictures of the knife, um, but uh, hope you enjoy a little uh, kind of little slideshow of my nephew and uh, this knife. Thanks for watching. <laughs>